Hi, welcome to VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com once again. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do rear brakes on a Volkswagen Microbus. It's a Kombi, it's a 2.5 model. I've worked on this vehicle before, they regular customers. Um, they brought the vehicle in and uh, they basically said that the brake pedal was fading. You know, when they apply brakes, um, you know, it goes right down to the floor and then they got to pump it once or twice and then the brakes activate. Okay, so... I uh, checked the car out, you know, and then I found that there wasn't any visible uh, signs of leaking, you know, but I thought maybe it was an internal master cylinder leak, but um, unbeknown to me, you know, it was not that either. So when I stripped it down, I found that inside there was some components that had come loose and fallen down and scraped and done all sorts of funny things, okay. So at the end, it was just basically the brake shoes that needed to be replaced, the drums needed to be skimmed, and I needed to replace the rear, um, uh, the cylinders, you know, the brake cylinders. So I've done all that, I've skimmed the drums, I've put everything back together again, and uh, the brakes are 100%. Okay, so enjoy the video and uh, thank you very much for your subscription. Now, those of you that have not subscribed yet, really consider it because it does help me grow my channel. Okay, up until my next video, this is Gary De La Cruz for VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com. Drive safely. See you soon. Cheers. All right, just to show you briefly what tools basically are required, you know, um, besides your wheel brace for taking off your wheels. Okay, you're going to need a size 46 socket. Okay, with a nice power bar, I'm using a half inch drive socket there. Alright, that's to take off the castle nut on the, on the flange that holds the drum in position. Okay, or that the drum bolts onto. Alright, and then of course we're going to be needing a size 8 spanner for the bleeding nipple, a size 11 spanner for the uh, feed pipe, the brake fluid feed pipe, size 13 spanner for the, um, for the anchor bolt that holds the, the, the cylinder onto the backing plate, and then of course uh, side cu um, a side cutter, okay, water pump pliers, special clamps if you have them, if you don't, don't worry, you can just use a vice grip over there, okay, this is also a special tool to take off the anchor, anchor pin retainer clips on the brake shoes, okay, but if you don't have that, you'll see, you'll see in how I use the water pump pliers to accomplish that, okay, and then also just a plain old paintbrush, alright, just to sort of uh, wick away some of the dust you know, to make your job a little more clean. All right, so that's basically the tools that you're going to be needing. Um, so I'll get back to you when we are ready to put everything back together. So this is the back of a Microbus uh, 2.6 Combi. Okay, um, the customer's complaint is that, um, you know, he has to pump the brakes before it actually uh, uh, gets effective. Um, I've done an inspection around the vehicle on all the wheels. There's no brake fluid leaking. There's no uh, ruptured pipes. Um, the brake fluid level is being maintained. So I need to open up the back here so that we can uh, inspect the brake shoes at the back. Okay. So what you basically do is what I've already done. I've taken out the retaining pin that holds the castle nut that actually holds the flange okay, um, of the back. So I've taken that out, um, you know, it's required a size uh, 46 socket, you know, and I've loosened that up while the wheels were still on and, uh, you know, the car wouldn't move because these nuts, uh, nuts are pretty tight. Okay, so I'm going to take this and remove. You can see it looks a little wet because I put a bit of lubricate, uh, lubricating oil on it, you know, just to loosen it up a little bit. And um, so I'm taking the castle nut off. Okay, um, before I take it off completely, I just want to remove the, the, the drum. Okay, the drum, just sort of shake and wiggle the drum, take the drum off, and uh, let's take, oh hell, look at inside here, yeah, let me show you. Okay, there's pieces uh, laying loose inside, and you can see all the scrape marks inside the drum. So these things have been rolling around in here. The customer also complained about a, uh, about a bit of a noise, you know. So, um, yeah, uh, you know, it, it all is starting to make sense now. And then, of course, um, I'll just put the drum down there. Let's take the castle nut off completely. And then this flange just basically pulls off, okay, because it's on a spline. You can see there's a spline over there and inside, you know, there's a spline there. So it just basically splines on and tightens up. I'll put that one side. Now we can actually see what's going on um, inside here. Yeah? Okay, you can see that the adjuster 
is basically gone, okay? This, this adjust has fallen out, okay? And there are little bits and pieces here, you know, that holds everything in place. So with the adjuster being out, you know, the, the brake shoes will just not adjust properly and therefore he has to pump a few times before he actually gets effective brake. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to strip this down, okay? Uh, what I do, do notice, um, you know, uh, let's, let's just, I've, I've noticed it's a little bit wet here, you know, a little bit clammy here. And uh, I just want to, uh, okay, as I suspected, you see those uh, rubbers behind the rubbers are a little bit wet there. Okay, so, you know, it's starting to leak brake fluid out of these cylinders. So I'm going to strip these cylinders off as well and hopefully replace the cylinders as well. Okay, so the cylinders, the brake shoes, we're going to have to, we have to replace. The drums, I'm going to send to my engineer and I'm going to see if the drums can be skimmed. Otherwise, we have to try and source brand new drums. But... I'm going to need these little bits and pieces. Okay, so I'm going to strip down next door, the, 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 the opposite side, and then I'll take the camera over there and show you what it's supposed to look like when all the parts are intact. So here we are on the opposite side. Okay, you can see all the springs are intact, the adjusters there, but it's not in the correct place. This adjuster should go up a little bit more here. Okay, because there's like a cleft in the shoe that the adjuster needs to uh, needs to sit in there. Um, this all sort of looks a little bit clammy here, but peeling back the dust covers it seems to be dry. But I'm not going to take a chance. I'm going to replace both sides. Okay, and this is basically what the setup should look like with that thing actually being in line. Okay, so. I'm going to see if I can source the new adjuster because I see the, the, that adjuster is a little bit damaged. You can see the adjuster is a bit damaged, it's been scraped. Okay, you can see there as it's been rolling around, it's been scraped. Let's just match up this little piece here. Let's go and look on the other side and see where this comes in. Yeah, so this little piece looks like this section that goes onto the brake shoe here. Okay, um, that is where you know the spring basically attaches to to keep tension on the adjuster okay uh, this is actually an adjuster lock okay it locks the adjuster so that the adjuster it doesn't adjust itself down it uh, adjusts up this is how it's designed as you pump and the brake shoes wear um, you know as you pump your brakes this will sort of uh, uh, work the adjusters up you know to keep it adjusted so that the brakes don't go soggy okay or, 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 or low Right, so I'll get back to you when I've sourced all these parts and I'm about to assemble it. Right, so coming back on the affected side, you can actually see that adjuster lock. You see the little piece is broken off at the back over there? That piece goes on there, all right? But fortunately, that will come with a brake shoe, so we don't need to worry too much about that. But I'm going to try and get a new adjuster. If I cannot, I'll just have to clean the old one up and uh, use it over again. Right, I'm going to quickly show you how to strip down, take these brake shoes off, okay? So basically, we want to loosen up all the springs, okay? All right? Um, bear in mind, remember where they come. If you can't remember where they come, then just take a photo, okay? Uh, before you start stripping, so that you know, uh, you know, you're going to find them. All right, so this bottom spring here basically i can't see behind this lever but basically we just want to pull it or another a simpler way would be let's loosen up the uh, retaining pins the anchor pins okay we loosen them up as you know how they work it's very simple okay it just has a slot um, in the in the retainer clip and the pin that comes through the backing plate, you know, and with you giving it a slight twist, it will prevent it from coming out. And then of course you have the spring on it, and the spring keeps keeps the tension up on it. Okay, so we'll put all that one side. Okay, then what I normally do is you can just take your hand like that, and then you can just, you know, put that shoe off uh, the the its its uh, resting position over there. Um, that would probably be the simplest way uh, without stressing yourself out too much okay so we'll take that anchor pin out of the way as well we do exactly the same there and then quite simply we don't have to struggle so much with these springs okay then of course those springs you know you can see they just sort of go into the brake shoe like that and see how they go into the brake shoe okay um, so you just sort of uh, twist it all right take it out of the way that's your one brake shoe 
okay and we do exactly the same on this side all right we just unhook it over here you know just unhook it take the spring out quite simply put everything out of the way you unhook the handbrake cable all right okay unhook the handbrake cable over there and then of course now we can nice and easily take out the bottom spring all right so there we have it two brake shoes all right okay we're going to be replacing those we're going to be although the lining looks um thick enough but it had, does have score marks on the lining and when we're going to cut the inside of the drum or replace the drum we cannot have linings that have score marks on it because it'll just imprint those score marks on the brand new uh, uh, machine surface and uh, it's not going to last really long okay as i say i just simply wipe all the dust with a brush a normal paint brush not an expensive uh, uh, thing you know um, i just keep all my old paint brushes when i do paint jobs at home around the house i keep my old brushes you know uh, so that i can use it for these purposes over here and you can basically clean that up pretty nicely you know i'm working sort of uh handicapped here because uh, i'm trying not to knock my camera over so excuse me if i seem a little clumsy but that's as easy as it is okay all right so now we have to remove that okay we have to remove the the inlet pipe with the brake fluid okay we have to take off um we have to take off the bleeding nipple and then of course there's a size 13 head retaining bolt down at the bottom there i'll strip it down and once i've got it out i'll show you you know um to, to give you an idea of how it actually comes in what is also important to do is just to block off your your feed pipe your brake fluid feed pipe so I use this special clamp, okay? Basically, you clamp it so that, you know, the brake fluid doesn't flow through, okay? While you're stripping it down at the back here, okay? So we're gonna be stripping down the pipe, okay? The pipe, we take the nipple off and the retaining screw, all right? So I'll go ahead and do that. Just a quick tip, you know, if you do not have these special clamps, you can use a vice grip okay just adjust it appropriately because you don't want to pinch the the rubber pipe too much okay you just want to sort of close up the little hole inside okay so that the brake fluid doesn't run through so you can use a vice grip okay so i've loosened up the pipe you can see on top there i'll bend the pipe down for you and uh, basically the cylinder will just pull off now so that's it what it looks like and that goes through so that's the, the 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 bolt that holds it in position against the backing plate over there bolt comes through that hole um, that's your brake fluid pipe that comes into that hole there and then of course you have a bleeder okay a bleeding nipple so that's what your cylinder looks like we will be replacing these cylinders as well okay so quite simply to take it off it's just one bolt that holds it together I'm okay that's what the screw looks like that comes in from the back like that and that holds you know that holds your your cylinder on so i'm going to source all these parts required and uh, i'll show you how to put them all back together uh, also remember that the one side is the it's a mirror image of the other side so i'll show you to do one side and you'll know how to do the other side as well okay so i couldn't source new adjusters okay but i'm going to use this one again i've cleaned it up nicely um, additionally i'm just going to take a little bit of uh, oil and i'm just going to lubricate the the threads okay so that it doesn't uh, get tight as time goes by um, you know uh, remember that it is it is basically housed um, you know in a in an enclosed environment inside the drum so it should be okay you know and uh, i've sort of just cleaned it up that the best that i could okay made sure that i've got now all the little components that i need okay i need uh, you know two retaining uh, 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 pins two retaining clips the springs that go with that okay that's the bottom spring okay those are the two top springs that pull the shoes in 
Okay, uh, anchor uh, basically uh, keeps the shoes pulled pull in up against the adjuster. Right. And then of course that is also a part of the adjuster. I'll show you how it all comes together, um, you know, when I assemble everything. Okay, but now I'm going to be putting a new cylinder in quickly on this on the one side. I'll show you how we do that. Okay, just quickly, a brand new cylinder in this box. I've already opened it up. Okay, that's brand new. How a bleeding nipple basically works, it's tapered, okay, it's tapered and it's got a little hole in it over there, as you can see, there's a little hole in there, and basically, um, you know, where it fits in, it, it has a taper down at the bottom as well, so when you tighten it up, it basically seals off, you know, it, 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 it seals up the cylinder, but when you're bleeding and you need to get the air out, as you loosen it up, you know, the taper pull, this taper pulls away from that taper and it basically gives you access to that little pin size hole there and all the air will be expunged through that, through that hole over there. Okay, so once it's tightened up, tightened down, it actually seals up. The minute you loosen it up, it actually opens up and it allows per breakthrough and air to be expunged. Okay, it's very simple. So we'll take that out of the way, you know, just put that down inside our, our, our parts and we'll go over to the car. And then I'll show you how we do that. So what we're going to be needing here is we're going to be needing a size 11 spanner and a 13 spanner. And we're going to be needing our nut. Okay, uh, that retains um, this unit here against the backing plate. So we'll take the cylinder like that, okay, down at the bottom where the, where the screw comes through. All right, let that face the bottom and we'll put that on. Before I tighten up anything, I normally like to just thread the, the, feed, the, the feed pipe, okay, before we tighten anything. You just make sure that that feed pipe turns on nice and uh, easy, that it doesn't um, cross thread, because these are very fine threads and they, they, cross, they, they cross very easily, okay. Threads can, can get crossed. So once you're satisfied that it's turning on nicely, okay, um, that, that is threaded nicely. So now we'll fit the retaining, the retaining bolt. And basically the same procedure for, for, the, for the retaining bolt. Okay, um, we put it in there and we make sure that you know you, you can still turn your, your, your cylinder any which way that you need to. Nothing's tightened up yet. So we'll turn that until we feel that that is uh, threaded nicely before we put a spanner to it. So I'll put a spanner to it now and we'll tighten it. Okay, that's the anchor bolt that holds the, the, the cylinder onto the backing plate. We'll tighten that up nicely. Okay, now we'll take our size 11 spanner and we'll tighten up our inlet pipe, our brake fluid inlet pipe. Okay, that goes onto the cylinder. And then, um, you know, we make sure she's nice and tight. So once the, the anchor bolt's tight and the, in, and the, the feed pipe uh, uh, is, is tight, we can actually put the bleeding the pole into position. Okay, we we'll turn it up against. Um, actually, we tighten it up because we don't want the brake fluid to leak. Okay. Um, and don't forget that once you have this whole procedure done, just before you bleed the brakes, you want to take your clamp off okay the clamp that you use to to um, to block the the, the the flexible hose you want to just take that off okay which i have on the back there okay we want to take that clamp out of the way so that now we don't have that pipe clamped anymore so the brake we can flow through the pipe nicely when we bleed the brakes okay and that is basically um we now have our cylinder in place okay so next step we'll fit the brand new shoes okay so here's a little tip you know when you have these cylinders on and you have your inlet pipes connected you might find that you know these pistons push out you know uh, while you're working on one side so i have these special clamps here okay which holds the side that you're not working on holds those pistons pushed in but if you don't have these clamps here's a simple way of doing it you know you just take a cable tie 
and you basically you know clip the two pieces uh, you know the pistons pushed in with a cable tie like that quite simple you know so when you're ready to work on this side once you've done the opposite side now and you're ready to work on this side you just snip the cable tie off and you go ahead and assemble it because I have found uh, in my experience over the years that you know when you're working on one side the other side pushes out okay so just a just a tip for you there. I am now underneath the car and this is basically the adjustment uh, for your um, handbrake. Okay, what I suggest that you do is turn this size 10 nut down as far as you can until you feel there is no tension on the cables. Okay, because you don't want um, the handbrake cable to pull on the levers. You need it all the way down because when you adjust the foot brake, you need to adjust the foot brake up first and then lastly you adjust the handbrake just until the brake shoes take against the drums and then you know that it's set at its basically at its optimal. So as you can see, the handbrake is, is all the way back now. Okay, it's adjusted all the way down. All right. Okay, so we've managed to get a set of uh, rebonded shoes, okay, with new lining, okay, that's a rebonded, and we had the, uh, we had the drums machined, okay, because we, I couldn't source new stuff for this car because of the age, okay, but this is good, good enough, better than good enough, because these are actually oversized, so they, the linings are a lot thicker than the standard uh, brake shoe, okay, so I'm going to show you how to fit these uh, new, well, rebonded brake shoes and how to adjust the brakes and bleed the brakes. Okay, so we are ready to put the brake shoes back on. As you can see, we've got the, the cylinder in place. Um, I've tied it up with this cable tie just to hold it together. So I've loosened that up. Okay, we'll take the We'll take the trailing shoe first, which is basically the handbrake shoe in this case, where the handbrake lever goes on to. Okay, we'll clip that on, and then we'll just simply put the, the section into the cleft, and the same here, you can see that cleft over there, okay, that goes into the shoe like that. Okay, you've got to make sure that those things go in. Once you have it in, we can take the anchor pin, okay, you can see it coming the anchor pin should come out through that center hole. Alright, we'll put the spring on. And the retaining um, the retaining washer. Okay. Turn it so that it locks. As you can see, it's locking, it's holding the shoe. Alright, so we'll take the trailer, the leading shoe. Okay, we'll put the spring on the leading shoe, uh, hook the spring in, okay, get it into the cleft of the cylinder and into the cleft of the anchor of the hole down at the bottom over there, okay, and then <coughs> we'll simply put the pin in, okay, line it up nicely, the way you're going to do it, um, now we'll take the spring on top of the anchor pin, and we'll take the, the anchor pin clip. We'll try and line it up best that we can before we put a spanner to it. Okay. And uh, we'll put the spanner over. With the pump lines, give it a half a twist. Okay. And until it locks into position. And we know it's not going to come loose. All right. I'll take you closer. You can see it's locked into position nicely over there. Okay. And it's the same on that side. Alright, so we've got everything locked in, into place, we've got the shoes, both shoes secured, so now what we need to do is, we basically need to put the adjuster, the adjuster in, okay, what we can also do, we can put the bottom clip in, you see this, the bottom spring, you see this section is longer than that section, so I'll put that piece in first, okay, just slide it in nicely there, and then take a, 
a side cutter and put the other side in. So that basically pulls the, the bottom of the shoe together and those two springs pull, pushes the top of the shoe towards each other. Okay, make sure you get the clips in nicely and make sure that you get your that you get your um, your uh, you clip in your handbrake cable. Okay, so now what we will do is we'll turn our adjuster down as far as it will go. Okay, turn it all the way down. You can see that that lock that goes okay all the way down. So how this goes is that section goes like that. Okay, remember there's a there's a, a, a like a groove in the shoe here. Okay, that cut out. Um, there's one behind that behind that clip. The, this adjuster, the adjuster goes this goes that way. Okay. Now what we can do is we can just pull the shoe back a little bit by hand like that, and let that and let let that groove fit in there. That'll push up against that, which will which will lock your adjuster. Okay. To help with locking the adjuster, you basically have this spring over here. So that spring goes in like that. Okay, the bottom end goes into that hole there. And then the top end, you just basically pull it up with a side cutter. Okay, and you can see that that will basically lock into position over there. Okay, now we can adjust the brake shoe. Okay, and you can hear that clicking sound. So that basically locks, that basically locks your adjuster. Okay, so that your adjuster will not turn itself loose. Okay, so as you adjust, you can hear that it is locking. So what we need to do now is, we need to put our flange back on, because we need to put, put our drum over, because we need to know how much we have to adjust um, the brakes, okay? So you will basically see that the handbrake is all the way back, like I explained, okay? The handbrake's all the way back, because we adjusted the handbrake cable down all the way, until there was no more tension on the cable, okay? And then basically what we need to do is we just take a flat instrument or a screwdriver and we need to adjust, um, you know, enough for the, for, the, for the brake shoes to start pushing against the drums. I'll show you how we do that now. Okay, so we'll adjust, we'll adjust the, the brake shoes up quite a bit then. Okay, ever so now and then we'll take the drum and we'll slide the drum over to make sure that it's not locked up yet okay it mustn't be you must be able to turn the drum all right so we'll turn it up a little bit more check it again okay it's still turning quite freely so we'll adjust it some more so this is the way that we will adjust it until that until the drum goes on just nice and snugly, okay, nice and snugly, um, must be able to loosen it, take it loose, okay, um, we can make it a little tighter, but you don't want to make it that tight that you cannot take the drum on and off, the drum must be able to go on easily and come off quite easily, okay, because what we are basically doing is we are adjusting, you will see that these the, the, the brake shoes um, is moving out up against the drum you know because that friction material will bite up against the drum that will uh, um, you know ca cause the car to basically break so I can feel it's going on slightly tighter okay I would say that, that would be as tight as what I would want to want to make it. You make it too tight, it's gonna bind, and when it binds, you're gonna have a different problem where the drum will heat up, okay, and it will melt everything inside, and you'll have a different problem there. All right. So just until the drum just just goes on, you can see the drum is just going on nicely, okay. Against, you can hear it scraping against the brake shoe, all right, but it's not binding, all right. So now I'll tighten up this castle nut, put a new split pin in. Uh, then we get to bleed the brakes at the back and then we finally adjust the handbrake cable up. You know, you'll adjust the handbrake cable uh, with the wheels on. You'll adjust the handbrake cable under the car until the wheel goes tight and then you just turn it a few turns loose until the, the wheel just turns nice and smoothly and then you will know that it, uh, the brakes are set right. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now and get back to you when we got that all done. 
Okay, just a quick tip, you know, if you want to tighten the castle nut before you put the wheels on, uh, you can do it in this manner, okay? Put a bar um, in between two of the studs, okay? In the opposite direction is what you're going to turn it tight. And then, of course, you take your spanner, okay, and you tighten it up, and you will find that the, the bar will basically prevent um, the hub or the, the disc uh, or the drum from turning. Okay, that's how I do it. I stand on it until I line up the, the ball to put the split pin in. Okay, that's just a quick tip for you there. Okay, job done. Okay, I've got the wheels back on. I've adjusted the foot brake and the hand brake. Tightened all the wheels. Okay, and then as you can see on the pedal, when you depress, you know, it doesn't go down at all. Okay, it breaks up pretty hard. When it came here, it went right down to the floor. Okay, so job done. Handbrake is holding well. It's about three clicks and the handbrake holds. You can't pull away with a vehicle while the handbrake's on. So I would say that's a job well done. Microbus 2.6 uh, core combi, rear brakes.